is up guys this is max square and in this video i'm going to be showing you how to use some basic transitions and animations in ScreenFlow. so you'll see that i have a video clip in here just so we can mess around with some animations on top of a nice backdrop so i'm going to move this clip down one notch and i'm going to create a text box just add a text box here get rid of that backdrop and just center it and then I'm just going to change the text to something a little more interesting. So now what we want to do is we want to fade up the text and we also want the background to dim since it's kind of hard to read the text with the backdrop on it right now. So what we want to do is select the video clip and go to where the text box will begin and then go to the video tab and select add video action. Then what we want to do is just take the opacity and fade it down to about 40%. And then go to the text box, add a video action, go to the beginning of the video action and take the scale all the way down and the opacity all the way down. Then we're just going to line up the video actions together and then when we hit play you'll see that the backdrop dims and the text fades up. Then to reverse the video action we're going to take the first one, copy it and paste it at the end and then make sure the end lines up with the end of the clip. And we're gonna go to the end of the clip, bring the scale down again and the opacity all the way down, and then do the same for the video clip. So now if we watch it all together, you'll see that the text fades up while the backdrop dims. And then after a couple seconds, the text will fade away and the backdrop will come back to normal. So that is just a simple technique. We're gonna get a little more complicated by doing an animation I actually used in my previous video, the Screens App Review. Towards the end of the video, I had a couple of squares animate on and fill in, and then I had them animate off. So we're gonna try and recreate that action again. So we're gonna delete our text clip and the video actions for the backdrop. And we're gonna to wanna to bring the editor all the way up so we get a little more space to work with. Bring the video clip a couple of clicks down so we get some more lines to work with. We're gonna to go to the annotations tab and create a new shape. Then make sure you have the outline shape clicked and just click and drag while holding shift and you can create a perfect square. And you can style this however you want but I'm gonna take down the border width a little bit and change the color to white. And now what we wanna do is just duplicate this four more times so we can get the other squares in here. Of course, you can make as many shapes as you want, but I'm just gonna use five because that's a nice number to work with. And I'm gonna take the middle one, you can see I have the middle clip selected, and just drag it out to the center of the screen. And then I'm just gonna move the other clips to center that as well. So now that we have all the shapes, we're gonna start animating it. So go to the first clip here and create a video action. Go to the video tab, add action. Go to the beginning of the clip and we're gonna have this scale up and rotate. So I'm gonna go to the Z rotation and just enter in 90. And we can watch this rotate and scale up. And then I'm gonna do that for the other clips. Now you cannot copy and paste video actions because if you have a different property for the other clip, like a position or a different size, then the other clip is gonna inherit those new properties, which means you can't have shapes in different positions or of different sizes. So once you are done, you'll see that the shapes scale up and rotate all together. But now we wanna fill those shapes in with filled in squares and not just outline squares. So we're gonna create five new clips and we're gonna drag this down two more notches. We're gonna go to the annotation tab one more time, add a new shape and make sure you have the filled in shape selected. Go to the other square and just click and drag. Again, you can sell this however you want. I'm gonna just make it white again. And I'm just gonna center that in the square. And then you wanna copy and paste that again until you have five new shapes. And we're gonna go to the end of the first video action and make sure that the first square is starting at that place. And then we're gonna take the other squares and line it up with that. The other four, move them over one click. The last three, one click. The last two, one click. And the last one, one click. Then what you wanna do is just move the other squares to fill in with their respective borders. Then when we hit play, you'll see that the squares rotate and fade up and then it just fills in the other squares. 
So now the last thing to do is just add the ending transitions and the background dim. So what we're gonna do is just add the same rotate off effect for the outline squares and then just fade off the filled in squares. Just go to the end of the first clip, copy and paste the video action, line it up with the end like we did with the other clips, then go to the end, scale it down again, and go to the Z rotation 90, and then just do that for the other outline clips. Then for the filled in squares, we're just gonna have them fade off. So just select them all, right click, and select add ending transition. And by default, this should all be a cross dissolve, but if not, you can select the gear icon and select whatever transition you want. I'm gonna have these all fade away by the time that the end actions for the outline squares begin. Then at the beginning of the video action, we're gonna select our background clip, go to add action again, line it up with the others, go to the beginning and fade down the opacity to about 40%, copy and paste it, and bring the opacity back up. So now all together, all the squares should fade up and rotate, fill in, and the background will be dim, and then by the end, the background will go back to normal, and all the squares will be gone. So hopefully those transitions helped you kind of get a better idea of how much you can really do in ScreenFlow. As you can see, when you're working with a ton of different layers like we were with those 10 shape layers, it's not the best program to use, but it can definitely be done. Anyway guys, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.